show of hands, uh, just so I know how to turn this off. Uh, talk. How, who knows what a prediction method is and how it works? Okay, so that's probably like more than half. So I skip through this. So if, if, if I'm going too fast on anything, auto slow, let me know and uh, I go fast or slow. Okay, so basically, uh, for those who don't know, uh, so first question, what, what actually is a prediction market? Um, a, quick, a prediction market is um, a market on any event in the future that is uh, to the, the, the result of which is um, unclear as of yet. Uh, so basically, yeah, this is an example. So uh, here the question is, will the air train in Manhattan uh, uh, be repaired by July of 2020? Um, and then there are two answers that you need to specify when you set up the market. Um, you also need to specify how you're going to resolve this. So in this, um, uh, in this uh, case, you're resolving this uh, by saying uh, you, you are counting on an official press release from the NPA or the office of the mayor of New York. Um, so you have these two outcome tokens and they, um, they trade individually. So uh, uh, at any one time, uh, they add up to one because uh, basically at the time of resolution, the one that comes true uh, will pay out one and the other one will not pay out anything. So basically at any time, at any point in time, uh, the, the sum of these two tokens will be one and uh, at the resolution time, uh, the, uh, the uh, value, the market value of these tokens will uh, go towards what the resolution result actually is. Um, so, what is the conditional market? So, the conditional market is a prediction market that allows trading on assets that are contingent on the results of other predictions. Um, let me go into that. So, we find that in the real world there are many, many examples of things that are actually interrelated. So, um, uh, this is this is an example. So. Um, these three markets, will multi-collateral die or die on mainnet by November 18? Uh, will multi-collateral die overtake single collateral die and how much die is generated with it? Um, and will the stability fee for single collateral die go up from today's 10.5%? So these markets, they, they all work together because MakerDAO has said that uh, single collateral die will run in parallel with multi-collateral die for at least six months. So, um, uh, and clearly the answers all, these are all yes-no questions, and, and clearly the answers of these are correlated with, with each other, right? So, um, uh, so uh, yes, basically, if you have an opinion on this, this will probably influence your opinion on the other one and the next one. So, um, in the uh, so we've we've just put out a new framework for this. So, in, let me explain you how it used to work in the old framework. And um, so, in the old framework. Uh, you have a collateral token, say for instance Ether or DAI, and you would put it into an event contract. So the event contract here being, for instance, will my collateral DAI or DAI on mainnet by November 18? And, and then that would have uh, two outcomes, yes and no. Or, you know, this example has three outcomes, A, B, and C. Um, and you can buy the complete set. And um, then each of these outcomes you can trade individually. Um, so each of these outcomes actually have a price at any one time. Um, you can always take a full outcome set and uh, convert it back into a collateral token, or you can wait until the event is resolved, and then one of these outcomes will pay out one, and the other ones will pay out zero. Um, there's a different flavor where basically the one that we call scalar, where basically you can go long or short, and, and the, it's not binary whether they pay out one or zero, but they can pay out somewhere between one and zero, but basically the idea is exactly the same. Um, so if you actually had these nested uh, markets, so basically will multi-collateral die go live on main at 518, and will multi-collateral die overtake single collateral die, um, what, what you, in the old framework, what you would have had to do is um, you would have taken the first event, made, made a market out of it, so uh, uh, so basically you can have uh, answers A, B, and C, and then you can put these um, outcome tokens into, as, as a collateral token into a new event contract. So basically you, you instead of 
put the ether in here, you put the conditional outcome token, uh, con you put the outcome token um, of the first prediction in as a collateral token, um, and then you get these derivative tokens. So basically, here um, the first event has outcomes A, B, and C, and the second uh, event has outcomes um, short and long. Uh, and you end up with uh, six event outcomes, so A and high, A and low, and so on. Um, you may notice that you, you could also do this the exact other way around. So you could also switch these around, and you could also say, um, basically now I, for, I'll use event uh, two as the first um, as the first layer, um, and I get two, uh, two, two outcome tokens on the first layer, and then I put this into the second event contract, and I get three outcomes on this layer. So I, I end up with six tokens again. And if we actually compare these, you'll find that these are exactly equivalent. Basically, the payout function of A and high is exactly the same payout function as high and A. Um, and in this framework, these tokens are not fungible. So they don't, you can't, the, the system doesn't know that these are actually the same tokens. Um, and this is just for two, uh, this is just for two uh, separate events. Obviously, this get, gets way worse if you add more events. <coughs> So what we actually did is, um, we did this uh, new framework. It's called the conditional token framework. Um, and uh, what actually happens in this is you can specify any number of conditions. So in this case, we would specify two conditions. Um, the first one um, has three outcome slots, A, B, and C. And the second one has two outcome slots, high and low. And you pick the token that you put in, and then you get these uh, crossover. And you can basically, uh, that's that's uh, that's the only thing. You can now say that you only get one set of outcome points. So, um, what are the conditional frame, uh, token framework mechanics? So, A and high and high and A are not the same token. You can do a partial redemption. So, basically, if um, you have a token A and high and high occurs, so basically high occurs, then basically all the ones that are low they become void because low didn't happen, and all the ones that were high um, will become just a, a and high becomes A, B and high becomes B, C and high becomes C. So we can actually resolve some conditions before other conditions without actually destroying the entire thing. Um, what you can also do is you can buy baskets. So you can say, I would like to buy not A, so, uh, so I don't, uh, basically I would like to buy B and C. You can split positions. So basically if you already have um, uh, two specified conditions, say you have A and Y, and you can append another condition, say with uh, three outcome slots, one, two, and three, and then you will get, get A, Y, one, A, Y, two, and A, Y, three. Um, and you can merge positions. So basically if you have, um, if you actually hold all of these, these three now, so you have um, a, Y, 1, A, Y, 2, and A, Y, 3, you can actually just get your A, Y token back from it. Um, how does it work? So it's actually one, uh, it kind of goes a little bit against uh, the uh, traditional um, smart contract design school. It's actually just one um, big smart contract to which anyone can append conditions. So. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the advantage, the one big advantage of this is that um, there are tremendous gas improvements and, the, and you can actually see that tokens that should be fungible are fungible, fungible because they are identical. And so basically, whenever you actually add an event, so um, a, a, a registry entry to this smart contract, you can specify a maximum of 256 outcome slot, slots per condition. Um, and this is permissionless, there are no fees, um, and anything can be set, specified as an oracle by the person who actually pens to that contract. So this is, this is something that's out there, it's been audited. Um, you, you, can, you can add your own conditions to that if you choose to do so. Um, so let's go back to the, this example. So. Um, so now you have these three markets, and as we said earlier, these are all yes-no markets. So um, how many atomic outcomes would there be? 
just two to the three, right? So basically it's two times two times two, so that would be yes, 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 no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, and so on. So there's eight. Um, and these eight atomic probabilities of what is going to happen in the future um, is actually going to give you, so basically these, these probabilities, the eight probabilities of what could happen in the futures, future, these are actually going to be consistent. Um, so basically if one of these changes, so if, um, say, uh, obviously these are correlated, so if multi-collateral dye does not go live, multi-collateral dye will not overtake single collateral dye either. So basically if the probability for this changes, then automatically the probability for this changes, um, depending on how the market actually uh, traded these previously. Um, and uh, I, that's, I'll, give, I'll give you, uh, hang on, let me show you this. Um, so this is, can you guys see this in the lab? Fantastic. So, um, so basically this is, uh, this is uh, a different example. I'm sorry, I uh, should have used the same. So basically here the questions are, will Britain leave the EU on the 31st of October with no deal? Will the vote of no confidence of Her Majesty's government be passed before the 31st of October? And will there be a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland on the 1st of November? So obviously these are, again, iterated. So what you can do now is you can say, I want to have this as yes and this as no. And uh, then it will give you the, the, the uh, payout structure, so basically when when is this going to pay up? It is going to pay out if this is yes and this is no, and it's going to, you're going to lose the investment if either the first one is no or the second one um, is yes. What you can also do is like, you can also specify this one. So will there be a hard border? Say no. Okay. So what you can also do now is you can make these conditional. So um, say now this basically says if. Britain leaves the European Union on the 31st of October with no deal. Um, will there be a hard border? So basically, uh, okay, this doesn't make sense now, but will there be a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland um, on the 1st of November? And you can now specify this, and it will again give you the payout structure. So basically, um, if this happens, then you've taken a position on this market. But if this doesn't happen, <coughs> so um, if uh, the Britain doesn't leave the European Union on the 31st of October with no deal, um, then you just get a refund on your prediction. So basically, you can place a prediction on something that doesn't necessarily happen. So basically, it's just it's a, it's a contingent thing. Um, yeah, so basically, um, this is obviously making a good interface for this. It's super hard, just because it's not, I and mean, even for a simple bridge market, making a good um, interface is hard. So uh, this, is, uh, this is currently still very much a beta product. Um, let me go back to the top. Um, so how does this tie into Futaki? So basically, um, can we do a quick show of hands again? Who knows what, what Futaki is? Oh, wow. Well, about, uh, <laughs> about half again. Um, fantastic. So basically, Futaki is basically uh, bridge markets for governance. So basically, what you do, do is you, um, uh, you create a market on a question that you would like to find an answer on, and you specify a metric um, for which you would like to optimize um, your decision. Um, then you let uh, people trade on this market, um, and in the end, you actually use this data to res to to make a decision on what um, you would actually like to do. So this is something that's going to be big in DAOs and other decentralized um, decision making. And let, let me give you a concrete example. Okay, so say I have a company, and I I'm, I I have the CEO, and um, basically the company uh, we're wondering whether we should fire the CEO. So basically, then we find a, uh, a metric that we would like to optimize for. So here's um, what will the quarterly revenue be if we fire the CEO or if we don't fire the CEO. That's what we're going to optimize for. We could also optimize for something else. So say we could optimize for employee happiness, for instance. 
uh, but we're not going to do that here. So um, we uh, we let in, in effect what we do is we create two markets. So what is um, the quarterly revenue going to be given that we fire the, the CEO and what's the quarterly revenue going to be given that we don't fire the CEO? And then we see which one of these um, works out better um, and we use this to actually make the decision of whether we should fire the CEO. So over um, here, um, it turns out that uh, the market believes that um, if we fire the CEO, uh, the quarterly revenue will go up, so we fire the CEO. People who said, who, who traded on this other market, so um, what's going to happen to the quarterly revenue if we don't fire the CEO, they'll just be refunded, and everyone who traded on this market given that we fire the CEO, they um, will uh, make a profit or losses uh, based on the quality of their revenue prediction. So why, why, is, uh, why are conditional tokens important for this? Um, so basically, um, for this kind of decision making, having a consistent view of the future is actually super important. So basically, if you have different contingent events in the future, um, or different events that are correlated, having one consistent view of the future on which to actually base these decisions on, um, where basically all information actually feeds into giving you an accurate depiction of the future and probability space is super important. Um, yeah. So basically, one mass of a useful map of the future and probability space, uh, granularity and consistency. So basically, if one thing is going to change, you actually want everything else in your model to change according to how these things are related, right? Um, okay, so um, let me quickly check how much time I have. Four minutes. Okay. I can do this. Uh, so, um, the, the framework that I told you about, the conditional token framework, that's open. Anyone can attend to this, anyone can use this. Um, but we've actually built our own application on top of this. Uh, and so basically, the prediction market is fraud in a regulatory sense. So what we've actually done is we have um, gotten a license from a financial market regulator um, to make sure that we don't actually get shut down. Um, so giving you the good things first. So basically the British markets, um, we can offer them on anything but sport uh, to retail customers, which is super nice. Um, they are non-custodial and fully collateralized. Um, we have a market mechanism that guarantees you liquidity um, and it's denominated because obviously having this in a stable asset uh, makes things easier because otherwise you just conflate two predictions about the future. Um, okay, so the badge. Uh, um, we have to do AML and KYC because we have this license. Um, there's a 1% trading fee, um, but this is not really bad. You can request the market. Um, if you want, and we are the oracle because uh, basically we are the ones. Uh, uh, so we have we have the oracle. On, uh, we are the oracle on this um, on this instance. Um, why, uh, uh, why why do we take fee? Obviously, because we were startups with negative cash flow, um, and we are regulated in Gibraltar. So basically, that um, uh, that means that we can offer this to anyone in Europe, um, and most of the work, except for the US and Canada, I'm super sorry, um, we'll work on that once, uh, once we have seen that this, this, this works in other parts of the world. So um, the beta went live this week, and you can take part in it, um, if you go to site.pm and sign up. Um, so basically there's a couple of markets live now, and we, had, we, we started all of them at 50-50 chances, so basically there's, a, there's, there's actually quite a lot of money on the table right now if you, if you want to partake. Um, the, um, you will have to go through KYC, um, so basically you will have to have a scan of your passport and you cannot um, be a uh, US or Canada or Chinese citizen. I'm super, I'm super sorry about this, we are, uh, we are still working on that, but if you're not from one of these three countries, Ask would be pleased to take part. Um, and uh, basically, currently, we have markets such as uh, on the price of Ether, the trans uh, basically the uh, transaction fees on a certain date, and maker stability fees. So basically, things within the ecosystem. We will go to uh, we will go to 
other markets. So he's starting with political markets after this. Um, we have, so no, we have an ecosystem fund. Um, this round just um, closed, but there's going to be another one uh, this year. So uh, check that out on GitHub, Gnosis slash Gecko. And we're also looking uh, for a couple of people to join our team. So you can actually check that out on Greenhouse. And uh, thank you guys for your attention. Do you have questions? Yes. Um, I was looking at those conditionals and I'm thinking that each additional conditional provides an opportunity for you to have a stuck token because of, do you see what I'm saying? And is that why hypnosis reviewing to make sure that there's no obvious um, so you you mean um, if you you mean if you if, if there's no way to resolve it? Yeah, like an un unresolvable question. Yeah, so basically, I mean, what you can do is you can buy up the alternate and then just merge them together again, right? So basically, if, if you have like an A B question you can't resolve it, you you can just buy, have both and just strike that off of your to uh, of your of your outcome token, right? Because you can also you can you can split and merge them be even before the things happen if you actually have all the all the different conditions. Yes, but basically specifying a good oracle and, and wording it in a way that is sensible makes complete sense. And as a person who actually registers a new um, uh, a new token, basically a new outcome token, you can say which um, which um, conditions you actually subscribe to. Um, so basically that's in your discretion as the person who creates this uh, amalgamated outcome token. But yeah, obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of room for things to uh, not work out if, if, if the markets aren't well and correctly. I have an additional one. Is, um, okay, so you have those those um, outcomes. Do you have like expository, like an ex expansion of that? Because a, a single sentence describing, I mean, there must be like a very deep description underneath that, right? Yeah, so basically. Nice you know, you want something that everyone can understand, mother, but then it's like the deep description, exactly. The small print, right? Um, yes, so uh, you're, you're completely right. Basically, it's, it's in effect, um, it's like a little contract that actually tells you how things are resolved and where we actually check. Um, for these things, and um, basically on the so it's it's kind of a it's a dual question. So on the conditional token framework, anyone can specify their own org. So basically, that's on them. On on the conditions that we register, yes, there's kind of like a it's it's literally like a contract that actually says under which conditions this will resolve, and you also have to make sure that um, it will resolve in any case, right? Because uh, yeah, so it's uh, yeah, absolutely, very good question, Jeff. 